Gentlemen, please hands here again. Happy Septandi the 9th. Uh, we're going to go back in time and watch a video that I recorded a few days ago here in a minute. But um, this new desoldering gun came today, and uh, I, uh, I haven't tried it out yet. I just got home from all the corn chopping and I'm whooped, so I'm not actually going to do anything this evening. I'm just going to show you this thing and then. Uh, We'll go back and watch the previously recorded video on the Tandy 1000, which is which is an absolute disaster. Like seriously, dude. Like, it's bad. It's really bad. I haven't even edited it yet, but it's really bad. So maybe you don't want to watch it. I don't know. Heiko is is, is a Japanese company, um, but I figured this would have been made in China um, to their specifications. But no, this was actually made in Japan. So, um, I have high hopes for this tool. I think it'll be far better than that piece of junk that I'm still a little miffed about. The, the footage that's coming is really, really bad. Um, so, you know, just uh, don't watch it if it's too bad. I'm, I'm actually kind of embarrassed about it, but I don't want to put these things back together and then disassemble them again for you. And also, I'm rambling on again, aren't I? Oh, curse you, beer. Um, I suddenly hit a, a hundred subscribers, and uh, that's kind of crazy, man. Like, cool. I'm not sure why you guys want to watch some dummy with like alcohol-induced brain damage mess with old computers, but hey, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have you. So thanks for. Uh, Thanks for joining me on these grand adventures. All right, without further ado, let's let, let's go back in time and let me embarrass myself for you. Thanks for watching. Um, here it comes. Beware. Good evening, gentlemen and ungentlemen. Welcome to South Handy the Fourth. Uh, this may post a little late though, so it could possibly be. September the 6th or 7th before you see this, but as I record this beautiful video, it is September the 4th. And if you recall, yesterday we had a very sad time working on the TRS-80 Model 4 when our lovely uh, desoldering gun died. Dun dun. Dun dun. Dun 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 dun. A beautiful pair of Tandy 1000 HX personal computers and a pair of monitors which don't match. Here we have a Tandy uh, CM5 CGA monitor and above it we have an old Commodore 1084 which I'm using for its composite input at the moment. So, uh, why do I have two of these? Well, I bought one just for some of the expansion cards that it had in it. And I was planning on flipping it back onto eBay. <laughs> Evil laugh. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, it is something... I, oh, yes, that's... I was confused before in the first video. I said that we were going to fix that one which was a part before that had a uh, bad composite video out, but, but it, I thought I'd taken it apart and switched the motherboards, but I guess I'd taken it apart and then not gotten around to switching the motherboards, because this is my main, my main Handy 1000HX right here, and it's the one with the bad composite output, so we're going to try to fix that. We're going to tear them apart and look inside and have happy times. And I also apologize if I'm extra obnoxious today. I'm actually out of beer, so there are only, there are, there are only a, a couple of things left to drink in my house. I know that hasn't happened to me since I was in college once, but um, these things happen, I suppose. So let's, let's do a thing to computers. Yes. This may end up being quite a long video. I apologize in advance if so. The Tandy 1000 HX in particular is probably tied with the PS2 Model 25 as my very favorite IBM PC compatible.
um, even though it's more like an IBM PC Junior compatible, which is a little strange. We'll talk about that. Um, so uh, the, the the there was an actual Tandy 1000 with no letter designation that was released before that, and I think there was also a Tandy 1000 A as well. Uh, they were just regular desktop computers, you know, with a detached keyboard and stuff. But the the Tandy 1000 EX was the first all-in-one unit like this. It was very much like the HX, except it had a five and a quarter inch disk drive in the side. Uh, the HX is pretty much the same machine, except the ROM's a little different, and it has a 720K uh, 3.5 inch drive um, in the front instead of the side, and uh, it also has an empty uh, an empty uh, slot for a B drive, which I've never seen one of these that actually has two disk drives installed in it. Maybe they actually existed. I don't know. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can power everything up here and have a lovely time. The CGA monitor is on. The switch on the 1084 is a little wonky. Okay, the 1084 is on. Now this one here, uh, this is a completely Stop. Well, okay, there's some stuff missing out of this one, but for all intents and purposes, uh, I mean, like, RF shields and stuff are missing out of this one. Um, but it's it, it has no expansion cards in it. This is where you get to the expansion bay um, underneath of this cover. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little while, but there's nothing in there. This is a bog-standard 1000 hx and it is attached to the 1084 via the composite video output, and I'm going to switch it on, and we'll see what happens. But uh well that was quick. Yeah, it's got uh it's got DOS version 2.11 in ROM. Fascinating. Let's try that one more time. So did you see that flash up there right quick before it went into 80 column mode? It said it has 256k of RAM. That's a far cry from 640k, isn't it? And you, you'll note that the video quality is very poor, too. Actually, it it looks a lot better on the camera than it does uh, for real looking at it. But, uh, yeah, the composite output on these things, uh, I mean, on any CGA card with uh, composite output, is, is, is not good. I'm not... You can't really run uh, the, this kind of monitor in 80 column mode. It's just not... It's, it's not practical. You can read it through the camera, but trust me, like, looking at it, it makes you want to, like, scream and run away and be sad inside. So, um, let's, let's check the other one out now. And, uh, it'll be on the CGA monitor down here. And did you see that? It had 640K. Let's try that again. 640K! So this one's got some expansion cards in it, which I knew beforehand. This is like my, my main good old boy. He's a good boy. Um, this one I got off of the interwebs just to take one of the cards out and put into this one. So uh, let's take it apart first since it is all complete and it'll be more representative of the type of Tandy 1000 HX that you are liable to encounter in the wild. So uh, the Tandy 1000, um, including these HXs, are uh, better described as a PC Junior compatible than a PC compatible. They are they are PC compatibles. They're compatible with CGA graphics. They're com uh, anything that would run on the uh, on the IBM PC and XT will run fine on these. But they also have some um, extended graphics modes, uh, TGA graphics they call it, which actually were introduced with the IBM PC Junior. Uh, the PC Junior was a complete commercial flop though. Uh, but somehow Tandy Radio Shack was able to uh, to push that thing into the future. And uh, TGA is just as good as EGA. It's a 16 color uh, s uh, graphics mode. Um, the, 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 the shades of the color are a little bit different than EGA, but in general, like, personally I think Tandy graphics look a little better than EGA, but I'm sure I am biased in that regard. Because this is one of my favorite computers. So, the, all of the expansion cards live 
underneath of this cover. Oh, oh, what do we have here? Oh, oh, oh. Expansion cards. Oh, yes. And uh, look at the back of the machine now while we're at it. If I can, uh, oh, I'm going to have to unplug the video cable, sorry. Um, let's, let's take a look at this. Now, th that's the video port right there. These are the backs of the expansion cards. And we also have a, uh, a uh, printer port and an external disk drive connector. And those are edge connectors. Uh, you have to have a special cable uh, to adapt this to a regular uh, DB25 or um, Centronix uh, printer port. And it's not, uh, it's a very dumb printer port. It's, it's in no way an extended printer port. It's, um, it, you can't, like, like if, you, if you're trying to run like PLIP on one of these, it, it won't run in 8-bit mode. You can get like 4-bit transfers using the sense line, so it's, it's very slow um, if you're trying to use this for networking on these things. Which you will have trouble with anyway because of all of the shit that these things have in ROM. You don't have hardly any UMBs to load uh, device drivers in high memory. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Anyway, so um, we're we have to remove the expansion cards before we can get the case apart. Uh, here you can see each expansion card is held in by a screw, and um, they plug down uh, with these pin header doohickeys. So let me take these screws out, and we'll start de yanking these cards out and see what's what, shall we? <sighs> okay, so we've got all the screws out, and uh, the first thing to come out is this uh, cover for the empty expansion port. And um, you can see it's just one unit here. Now, um, the way these come, uh, before expansion cards are installed is with all three of those covers uh, put together like that and they're made they're made so you install a card in the bottom you snap one of these off and put it back in you install the next card you snap another one off and you're left with this so um it's it's pretty common to find uh, Tandy 1000 HX's and EX's uh, the EX is the same way on eBay um, where uh, someone has bought them at just for one of the cards in inside of them because these plus cards are kind of hard to find especially the memory expansion card at least for um, reasonable money uh, and it's often uh, cheaper to just buy the whole machine and take the cards out um, so you'll often see these with like this missing or like a bunch of empty spaces in the back when you buy these things off of eBay so try a uh, Make, make sure you can see the back of any Tandy 1000 HX or EX that you're planning on buying. And if you manage to get one that hasn't been uh, molested, well, ha hasn't had the cover molested, don't don't snap these off, dude. Um, these things have become uh, more valuable than they used to be, and uh, you'd be better off, in my opinion, if you need uh, if you need to install a card. Uh, rather than snapping one of these off, just 3D print some kind of replacement um, to bolt in there uh, instead of uh, instead of messing up an intact cover. It took me a while to get one with an intact cover. Anyway, so now that we've got that out of the way, we can pull out the first expansion card. Let's uh, zoom in here. Ooh, oh, yes. <laughs> So, um, this is a serial card. It has one single serial port on it. Um, and being a Tandy, the, uh, the gender of the serial port connector is incorrect. Uh, so, uh, that requires an adapter. If you want to hook normal serial devices up to it, kind of a pain in the ass, but thanks, Tandy. And, uh, they connect via this, uh, this, this pin header here. So, um, you can see there are two different pin headers down in here. Um, the way that that works is, uh, this is this is a memory expansion card in here. Um, we'll look underneath of it in a little bit, but um, it exposes two of these connectors, and then when you plug in uh, expansion cards into one of either of these, you offset the card either to the left or the right, so it has to have three different mounting holes in it uh, on each side, which is very peculiar. Uh, why they didn't make these cards just stack like PC-104 cards do, I don't know. Um, they could have used like a, a, a wire wrap connector here with long leads on it and pushed one of these, uh, one of these shrouds down on it and just 
stacked them up vertically straight and not had to have done all of this crazy shit here. Uh, but anyway, let's, uh, let's pull out the memory expansion card. This is what expands the machine to 640k from the base 256k, and it is a tight boy. Uh, come, yes, there we go, and uh, here it is. Handy memory expansion card. Note that it only has two mounting holes because it can't be offset. It just plugs straight into the uh, original plus expansion connector. Uh, and uh, the other expansion cards plug into it. But this is basically the ISA bus uh, with a couple of um, pins changed, but uh, it's, it's, it's similar enough that you can buy or make these adapters to uh, convert the, uh, the plus expansion bus into a uh, right angle ISA card here so we can install like a hard drive controller or something with that contraption if we plug it down in there like that. Um, it's a guy, I think he's in Australia that makes these. Um, if you wanted to make a bunch at the same time it may be cheaper to just uh, order PC boards and make them yourself but uh, for my purposes it was uh, it's a little less expensive to just order this one. I should, I should, but he makes all. He also makes one that has two, uh, two slots in it. Um, but you can't use any other plus cards uh, with it installed. So, because uh, yeah, ch ch check out these plus cards. Okay. So uh, these these plus cards, um, the uh, the the ports in the back and the bracket in general is on the wrong side uh, compared to ISA cards. See here's a. This is an original Tandy 1000 uh, ISA memory expansion card that, as far as I know, is exactly the same as this one. It's just um, this uses lower capacity memory chips and uh, doesn't have any PLDs on it, so there's a higher chip count. But note that the, uh, the brackets are on different sides. So um, even when you have one of these uh, risers like this installed, if you plug an ISA card into it, it ends up wasting a slot uh, because the, the the bracket's on the wrong side. You can straighten this out and make them fit back in there, um, but it's 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 kind of a kind of a clusterfuck, really. Um, anyway, uh, so we've got all the expansion cards out. We'll come back to them here in a little while. But um, to get the case apart, then um, there are two screws down in here that have to come out. Um, and several screws on the back. They're all marked, you can see, as to what size screw goes where, uh, at least for getting the case off. Um, the internal screws aren't marked, but these things are pretty easy to take the top off of without getting fucked up, so uh, we don't need to record that. I'll be right back in a second. All right, so with all of the screws removed, thanks to the magic of video editing, the top just lifts off. Voila! And we can't see anything because of all of the fucking RF shielding. Yes, this was the 1980s, so everything had to be thoroughly encased in annoying sheet metal and, like, conductive cardboard coated bullshit. This is uh, this is actually the uh, RF shield that came off of this memory expansion card. Uh, the first thing that I do when I get plus cards that have this shit on them is remove it because these these sharp little uh, uh, solder joints on here with the little bits of lead poking through in my opinion will eventually work their way through this plastic coating on the top of this foil and shit will get fucked up and these RF shields serve no purpose in current year. Uh, their only purpose was to comply with 1980s FCC regulations, which only mattered when broadcast television was still a thing, which it isn't anymore. So, heck with those RF shields, yes. I, I keep losing my train of thought and rambling. Um, this is going to be a very hard video to edit, but uh, we're going to have to get through all this RF shielding here if we want to actually do anything useful to this machine. So, um, let's, uh, let's mix up a delicious fruity beverage because everyone loves delicious fruity beverages, right? Fruity! Oh, yes. 
um, and then we will start removing screws willy-nilly and misplacing them and generally making our lives into a living hell. Oh, that's a little too strong. It's going to be an exciting video. Um, so the first thing we want to do is take out this uh, disk drive bay contraption. And it has these two screws in the back that are really long. Long funny screws so you can get them out without cursing too much. So that's a nice of them. Um, but we will find that the rest of the screws in the machine will cause us to curse so much that the uncursable screws um, weren't really worthwhile. So then the back lifts up and there's this slot here in the front and the whole thing just kind of lifts out of there. Or should. Uh, there's, a, there's a cable plugged into the floppy drive. Um, on the other one, the other one I, I can get in and out without removing the cable, but this one doesn't appear to be that way, so you have to lean it up and then it comes out of this slot and there's the floppy drive. Now, note we have a floppy connector we have a floppy drive which has a power connector on it, but there's nothing there's nothing plugged into the power connector. Yes, the power to Tandy 1000 floppy drives are supplied over the ribbon cable, um, so they're not entirely PC compatible. Um, however, uh, I have used these exact disk drives in an Amiga 1 or Amiga 2000 before, and they work fine except the disk drive ejection sensor doesn't exist in these, so that confuses things a little bit. But the Amigas also supply power uh, over the ribbon cable. At least in my recollection, I haven't had an Amiga 2000 for a long time. I'd like to get another Amiga, but I'm kind of holding out for a 3000 UX. I'll bet if I ever do find one, I won't be able to afford it, though. Anyway, so uh, after we get the floppy drive bay out, then we can pull the whole floppy connector out of here, or the whole floppy cable out of here, and set it aside as well. Now, um, it's worth noting that... Um, the original uh, floppy interface specification was called the Shugart specification, and uh, it al actually allows four drives to be on the same uh, floppy drive bus, um, instead of two like in the PC. You'll remember that PCs use a twisted cable, uh, so the uh, whether it's your A drive or your B drive uh, depends on where, uh, which connector it's plugged into on the cable. Now, note that the Tandy 1000 is not like that. Uh, the Tandy 1000 actually implements the correct Shugart specification. You can have four floppy drives connected to this thing, um, and it just uses a straight-through cable for all four of them. Uh, but you do have to set the drive ID using a jumper on the drive uh, to tell it which is which. Um, and uh, all the drive motors will always run simultaneously because there's only one uh, motor enable line for all four drives. Uh, the Tandy, uh, t the, the TRS-80 uh, Model 4 is like that as well. Uh, I guess that's, this is a holdover from the Model 4. I, in fact, I, I prefer the proper implementation of the floppy interface anyway. So, next, of course, we will have to remove the keyboard. And uh, there are two of these uh, shitty flimsy ribbon cables that... Uh, connect the keyboard to the motherboard. Um, you got to be careful with these kind of ribbon cables because once you break them you're up the proverbial fecal creek with no means of motivation and no one enjoys that situation. To, to remove these you have to pry up these little ears on the side very carefully. Uh, you don't want it to go too sideways and break. These, these, these kind of connectors are just a huge pain in the ass. Why they couldn't use a regular ribbon cable is beyond my kin. 
Oh, you know what? I'll bet there's no PC board in this keyboard. I'll bet, um... I'll, oh, yeah, these are those shitty foam keyboards like they used in some of the TRS-80s, I'll bet. There's just a, um... There's, there's just a, a, a sheet of plastic under here that these, uh, these things are, are just part of. And these f conductive foam things underneath of the keys that push down on it. So yeah, I'll bet there isn't any way to fix these once they get fucked up. So, don't fuck them up. Yeah. Okay, so there is a screw on each side of the keyboard that is the same size as those shorter case screws that you took out of the bottom earlier and they come out and once you've done that there is an LED connector right here that has to come out yeah and then I think I think everything comes out now there may be a ground wire no everything comes out now okay keyboard is done away with there all right now, over here on this side, I don't know what this is. Uh, maybe it's a thing that some kind of like lock is supposed to go into for like fastening it to a table, but there's a spring and a, and a plate that go over this, this thing over here. And um, the first time I disassembled one of these, I had this left over when I was done. I was like, where the fuck does this go? So that, that's where they go, um, right there, like that. And we might as well go ahead and unplug the speaker and unplug the power supply, which takes a little bit of elbow grease. And now we can remove the big RF shield. There are actually three different RF shields in here. And uh, I will tell you one thing, we will not be reassembling this with the RF shields in place because they are a pain in the ass. Okay, so this RF shield has so many screws and one nut. I thought I was the only nut here. Ah, ah funny joke. Ha 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 I made a funny. <laughs> so the nut comes off. Maybe. Alright, so after, the, after it nuts, um, then all we have left are screws. Now, uh, oh yeah, shit, there's this cover over top of the power supply that we have to take off as well because um, it has some stuff that, uh, under the same screws and it's on top. So um, even if we re when we reassemble this without all of these RF shields, we still have to put this one back on because it... Uh, there's a, there's a cooling fan back here, and um, this uh, this 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 part of the shield helps uh, suck the air through the right way, and also um, there are mains voltages under here, so I think it's a good idea to have it um, just to uh, just to kind of keep us from accidentally laying our hands down on the wrong thing and getting a little jolt. Um, personally. I mean, I used to be a commercial industrial electrician. Uh, well, I did programmable controls for a commercial industrial electrical outfit um, for several years. And uh, that, that meant that I also ended up doing uh, some high voltage, like electrical wiring and stuff like that. It was kind of like, hey, we need some help. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I don't know. I've shocked myself on like 120 volt mains like a billion times. And it hurts sometimes if you shock yourself the wrong way, but I don't think it's like... Everybody's like, oh my god! AC current! <laughs> but, um... I don't know, man. If it was really that dangerous, a lot more people would die from it every year. Now, like, like three-phase stuff, and like, 240, yeah, you don't want to electrocute yourself on 240. That'll, that'll ruin your day for sure. But like, 120 volt wall current, dude, like... Unless you do something really stupid and, like, zap your heart, it, it's just going to make you squeal. So, of course, you shouldn't pay attention to anything I say. These videos are for entertainment purposes only. And if you electrocute yourself because of something I said, it's not my fault. No. Oh, get out of there, you dirty rat. You filthy bastard. 
Okay. So, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of running out of pit a pet at talk while I'm taking screws out. I was going to make this a super long video just for you, Yiz, uh, but I may have to do some extra editificating. Um, yeah, if I run out of stuff to talk about. Okay, so all the shit around the edge comes out, and we also have to take off this slot that the drive bracket mounts to. And note the screws are a different size here. Those are the same size as those shorter case screws from before. Yes. And that comes out. Now note, note that the slot is not centered. It has to go back in exactly the same way that it came out, or your drive bracket will not fit in the computer. So set it aside in the same orientation that it needs to go back in in. And then this thing just sticks down into here. It just, you can just pop it out of there. So this, this just sits under the keyboard. No idea what purpose it serves. And you know what I think about RF shields. So, with that thrown out of the way, hopefully we have all of the screws off of this. Oh, there, uh, there's one itty bitty short screw here. We have to take out to get this off. I forgot about that. And this this is a this screw is different than any other screw in the machine. So that's where it goes when you go to reassemble. And then this part should lift off, and I should probably unplug this thing. Uh, since we're going to be getting into mains voltages here. It, it, it hangs up on the, the threads of this stud that that nut goes into, and it gets to be kind of a kind of a pain in the ass there it came off. So that has to come off. There's the power supply, and once that's out of the way, we should be able to lift the big RF shield off, assuming I didn't miss any screws, which I did, which you could probably see on the camera, but I could not see from where I was sitting. That's my excuse, anyway. We all know whose fault it really is, though, right? Oh, my screws are falling there. All right, come hither. Come hither, ye. Yes, so. Now the bastard ought to lift up. Yes, there we go. Now, you know what I think of RF shields. Now, we have denuded our beautiful machine. We can look at it. Let's uh, let's see what all this stuff is. That whiskey's just not good. It's <laughs> not good for making videos. Okay, so the main board. It's very compact for an XT class system, isn't it? Very nice. Um, down here's the CPU. That's an 8088 CPU. It's basically an 8086 with an 8-bit external bus. Um, I guess it's. I guess the 8088 was a little easier to interface to, which is probably why it was in the um, lower end machines. I guess it made things a little cheaper. Um, on the 8086 with its 16-bit data bus, um, you have to do some funny like uh, it shares like some of the address lines and some of the data lines. If I recall correctly, I may be full of shit, but I, th I think that the 8086 is like that, and. Um, you have to have this like external latching bullshit, um, like a part, during part of a bus cycle, it puts um, part of it puts half of the data lines on these these pins, and then it, then it latches them onto the bus, and then during another part of the bus cycle, it it puts the the upper half of the address, or maybe it's the lower half of the of the address lines on there, and then it latches them onto the bus. It's it, it ends up being kind of funny. Um, and that one of the upgrades that we're going to do to this thing while we have it apart uh, is to put a, uh, an NEC V20 CPU in here. Uh, but we'll talk about that uh, later when we do it. Okay, so this right here is the ROM. Uh, that's, that's got the DOS 2.11 in it. And um, I thought it had DeskMate in it too, but apparently it doesn't because whenever I try to run DeskMate from the boot menu, it says that there's no DeskMate floppy installed. So I don't know. 
Oh, pardon me, what's going on with that? And, uh, I think this is the video controller right here. If you're used to screwing around with old PC, XT, and uh, AT, I guess, class machines, um, you're probably, um, noticing some things that are conspicuously missing from this board. A couple of things. Can you identify them? <laughs> well, yes, that's right. There is no DMA controller on this board. There's the RAM. Any other machine would have a DMA controller near the RAM. There is no 8237 DMA controller chip on this board. That is because this board does not support DMA. But, if you install the memory extension, expansion board, it does have a DMA controller on it. So, um, that's not as big a deal as you would think, though. I mean, um, in, in, in later machines, like 286 error machines, if you're on like a sound blaster or something, you need DMA. Um, but a DMA controller in a machine like this, the only, that has like an ad lib, even if you install like an ad lib card in these things, you know, like, no game that'll run on this is going to support more than an ad lib. And uh, the ad lib doesn't require DMA. The only thing that a DMA controller on a, this class of machine is really going to net you is uh, maybe, maybe a little bit faster floppy disk access under MS DOS. Um, and that's not so big a deal, in my opinion. Uh, the other thing that's missing. What is it? Have you seen? Yes! There is no battery anywhere on this board. There is no CMOS battery. There is no... There is no user programmable ROM on this thing. There's no flash memory on this thing like you'd use for BIOS settings and stuff on another board. No, there is, there is no... There is no system clock that maintains the time while the machine's turned off, even. So, um, when you, like, like a lot of these old machines, when you turn them on, if you want your files to have the right date and time, you've got to manually enter the date and time. And that's one of the things that we're going to try to correct on here. There's a dude in, I think he's in Australia, that makes um, a lot of shit for the Tandy 1000s. Um, he, that's where this came from, this uh, ISA converter for the Plus Bus. And uh, this is a Tandy 1000 Smartwatch Plus. And uh, it has a battery on it. Yes, this is a battery-backed uh, system clock. And what you do is you remove the ROM off of the system board, you plug the ROM into this board, and then you plug this into the ROM socket. And uh, once you do this, the uh, RF shield won't fit back on. But that's okay because, remember, repeat with me, kids, fuck RF shields. That's right. Excellent. Now, so we're not going to do that yet, though. Um, so yeah, other than that, this is a uh, pretty standard uh, XT class machine. It's got Tandy sound and Tandy graphics. Um, it's a three-voice PC speaker style sound rather than one voice like the PC actual PC speaker has. So it's it's pretty cool. These were uh, that's the the graphics and sound both came from the PC Junior. Uh, they're, they're superior to that of the PC and the XT. Um, I guess the, the PC Junior probably just failed because of that shitty, shitty expansion bus that it has. Um, most of the Tandys of this class, the, the like desktop Tandy machines that weren't all in one, have actual ISA slots rather than that PC Junior sidecar shit. That was a dumb move, IBM, jeez. Um, and this was a dumb move right here. Tandy Radio Shack Corporation, but uh, but that's all right. Um, we love you anyway. Uh, so yeah, thanks for joining me. I apologize for this bi video being so uh, so obnoxious. And uh, wow, that is a there's a there's an insect limb. Look at that! An insect limb was inside of my computer. That is disgusting. Go away, insect limb. You make me sad inside. <sighs> okay. See you next time. Happy September 4th, even though it's going to be the 4th, after the 4th, when you watch this. Yes. Bye.